guys, so today I'm going to talk about MTG Finance and the most common question I get from you guys is MTG Finance, MTG Finance, speculate, speculate, speculate. And it's really funny because I have tried my hardest to move away from that because there's a lot of negativity and MTG Finance right now is being broken into two Reddit groups. I'm not sure I understand why that's happening, but it is and I can tell you there's always a bit of drama um, in MTG Finance and I try to remove myself from it but that being said a lot of you uh, there's no other I mean Mythic MTG does a very good job at it I definitely want to recommend you guys to give his channel a look but there's really no I guess MTG Finance channel on YouTube so I get enough questions that I'll make a weekly weekly update and here's my update the first card that surprised me is Azusa, Lost But Not Seeking, uh, went up 20 bucks. And C is a card that is in the Amulet deck. Very good card. A very strong and powerful card. That is a card that can... You know, it, when it came out, it was no... It was pretty much... You knew it was good. Um, and you get your playset, and then you never trade your playset or sell your playset. And that's what I did. I have a playset of them, but I don't have a deck that went with them. I just knew that she would be good. I actually have a foil original of her, because at one time I made a uh, EDH deck around her. Definitely a very strong EDH. Is she legal in Tiny Leaders? I guess in Tiny Leaders, you don't need land drops anyway. But... So she's up $20 all the way from $22 to $42 right now. Wild Defiance, that card tripled in price. So even though it tripled in price, it's still $2.50. Azusa, I feel like her price is going to go down a little bit, but it should stabilize at like $38, maybe $35. I mean, it is worth that much. It's definitely not a $22 card unless it gets reprinted. That's true of any of these cards in this particular list. Uh, Wild Defiance uh, for the Poison deck. So that Poison deck did kind of well. And Wild Defiance, in my opinion, is kind of a janky card. It was it used to be bulk. When it came out in Innistrad or no, Avacyn Restored, it was a, a bulk card that was terrible. It was just such a bad card. Um, but now it has a deck in Modern that might want to use it. But um, in my opinion, that particular deck wants to beat you pretty fast. It's not going to wait. So even if you play, because that deck doesn't have any mana acceleration. So you're playing that card on turn 3 for 2 and a green, and then you have to wait another turn to go off. Well, every turn that you're waiting, your opponent, and especially in modern, they're drawing a Liliana, they're being able to play her, they can draw a a Brop Decay, they can pretty much, there's so much good removal in modern, that every turn you're waiting to go off and it's already a very fragile one creature system then you're, I mean it's not great, it is definitely not great. Next one, uh, I guess next two, Amulet. Amulet is seven bucks right now, man it used to be so bulk. It used to be like 50 cents back in the day. Not even, it was probably like 25 cents you could get them from bulk, now it's seven bucks. Uh, I love that deck by the way, so creative. Uh, Huge, huge, I mean, shout out to Sam Black. I mean, I that, the dude comes out with the most creative decks that can actually win games, and that's fantastic. So if you're, like, into making money and magic, I guess, uh, Sam Black is someone you should already have on your radar uh, as a deck builder that can move cards and double and triple prices of cards overnight. And then Hive Mind. So Hive Mind pretty much is bulk. I mean, there's no definition. I mean, Hive Mind was kind of a fun EDH card, but it's not actually. And the reason it spiked so hard, right now Hive Mind is $4. I cannot believe it. That card was like $0.10 cents the last time I, it was really mentioned in any context. Um, yeah, I mean, Hive Mind is a very good card in that deck. The Hive Mind... Uh, Summoner's Pack or the Hive Mind Pack of Negation, that's a legitimate win mechanism and it works. I mean, it's fantastic. Love the deck, love these cards in the deck that they're so, they are so unique. Um, so, yeah, $4 for Hive Mind, crazy, right? 
And the biggest loser uh, is Ghost Way. So Ghost Way was spiked up by you know who, what community. I actually don't know what community because right now they're fighting against each other. No, you spike Ghost Way. No, you spike Ghost Way. We all spike Ghost Way. No, no one spike. I mean, I'm. It's very confusing to me what's actually going on with the MTG Finance community, but uh, someone spiked Ghost Way after a deck. Ha ha ha. But what happens with these cards that are spiked, that are not in Sam Black's deck, is they go from $18.50. Wow, $18. No, 19 bucks for a card. Now it's 10 bucks. I mean, it essentially lost all its value, and I, I mean, it's not that great of a card. The deck that it, the deck that uses the card doesn't actually need it. Uh, in my opinion, it's a win more mechanism. If your tokens or whatever deck that's using it, why are you going to waste a turn not producing, like, I guess you could ghost away your own creatures and they would come back and produce tokens. But, like, why would you do that? Just play, just play like a blade splicer instead and... I mean, I don't know like what token you would be producing on that turn that would be bigger than a Blade Splicer plus the 1-1. One, one. But anyway, uh, that's MTG Finance. I do want to do like a quick 4-minute, 5-minute, 6-minute segment every single week about what cards have gone up, what cards are going down, and not tell you about what cards you should buy. Um, that might be another segment. I'm really looking into that, and I might go back with here top five cards to look at and stuff. I know you guys love that type of stuff. I'm a little hesitant because, honestly, if I did MTG Finance, I feel like... Uh, so if I guess a card right, and I use the term guess, then people feel like I am manipulating the market, or I am telling my subscribers to go out, buy a card, and just go spike in price. But if I guess it wrong, I'm just a bad speculator. So there's really, and if I guess a card that doesn't have you know any traction, then I'm just also a bad speculator. So the the it's not a win-win scenario right now. It's a lose-lose. So I have to kind of make it a win-win scenario for us and to have fun at it. Um, that's the main. I I never had fun at MTG Finance. I just really did not have any a good time doing it last time and you know looking at articles and stuff but i know a lot of you like it i know a lot of you are listening to me tell you about these cards and how to speculate how to i feel like the maybe the way to do it is to do reports like this where you can kind of see a trend and you can choose a card so in my opinion the best speculation you can make even if it utterly fails is the speculation that you felt most comf comfortable and confident making um you know, because then you made it for X, Y, Z. Maybe Z doesn't happen, but you kind of, you've seen it and you've experienced it and you have bled a little bit. And yeah, so that's probably, in my opinion, uh, the best way to do MTG Finance for our particular channel. Bye, guys.